Hi, you guys. Today I have with me problem 4.47 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. This is a challenging problem, so let's see if I can record this in one take. Okay, before we get started on this problem, if you haven't already subscribed or liked this video, please don't forget to do that. Thank you so much. Okay, so a small rocket with mass 20.0 kilograms is moving in free fall toward the Earth. Air resistance can be neglected. When the rocket is 80.0 meters above the surface of the Earth, it is moving downward with a speed of 30.0 meters per second. At that instant, the rocket engines start to fire and produce a constant upward force F on the rocket. Assume the change in the rocket's mass is negligible. What is the value of F? If the rocket's speed becomes zero just as it reaches the surface of the Earth for a soft landing. Hint, the net force on the rocket is a combination of the upward force F from the engines and the downward weight of the rocket. Okay, so, okay, so let's go ahead and first let's write down all of our knowns and then we can draw a diagram just to understand this problem a little bit better. And if we missed any values, then we can go ahead and draw those. By the way, I love rocket type questions because I work in the space sector. So I always just love these types of problems. Okay, so knowns. A small rocket with a mass of 20 kilograms. So let's say the mass of the rocket is 20.0 kilograms. It's in free fall towards the Earth. Okay. Air resistance can be neglect can be neglected. I was gonna say negligent. When the rocket is 80 meters above the surface of the earth, it is moving at a downward speed of 30 meters per second. So I'm going to write this a little bit differently. So at 80 meters, V is equal to 30.0 meters per second. Alternatively, you could also do this. V at 80.0 meters is equal to 30.0 meters per second. Whatever you want really doesn't matter, but these are both the same thing. Okay, these are the same thing. Okay, then again, okay, so at that instant, the rocket engines start to fire and produce a constant upward force F on the rocket. So they didn't really give us a value, so I'm not going to write that, that down yet. What is the value of F? Okay, so we're actually looking for F. If the rocket's speed becomes zero just as it touches the surface of the Earth. So at zero meters, V is equal to zero meters per second. Okay, what is F? Okay, so let's go ahead and actually draw out this problem and try to understand what's happening. So let's say that this is, I don't even like how I started that drawing of the rocket. So let's say that mm, this is the rocket. No, I hate that. Okay, let's just say that's the rocket. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. It doesn't really matter. But okay, so a small rocket with mass of 20 with mass 20.0 kilograms is moving in free fall towards the earth. So this is going to be the earth, right? Air resistance can be neglected at 80 meters. So let's say you know, at 80 meters. V is equal to 30.0 meters per second. And then the rocket starts to fire and produce a constant force F, upward force of F on the rocket. You know what? Let's say that this is the 80, just so that we know that when we're drawing this F, that's happening at this line. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this line. 
and this is going to be the 80 meter line. Okay, then assume the change in the rocket's mass is negligible, okay? What is the value of F if the rocket's speed becomes zero just as it touches the surface of the Earth? So over here at this line, that's zero meters, and V is equal to zero meters per second. Okay, so hint, the net force on the rocket. So now let's draw a little force body diagram. Let's see that this circle represents the rocket. There's going to be some, there's going to be force of gravity, and there's going to be this F force. And the net force on the rocket is the combination of the upward force F from the engines and the downward weight of the rocket. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually write down, write down that equation. So it says in the question that F net is equal to F minus Fg, right? And let's just go ahead and see that this is positive and this is negative. Okay, so it's going to be F minus Fg. Okay, so now one thing that we can do, actually, you know what? It would be so much easier. I think this question would be easier if we make, if we do the opposite. If we go ahead and say that this is positive, this downward direction is positive, and this upward direction is negative, I think that, yeah, that'll make our life so much easier. I like that way better. Okay, so let's rewrite that. F net is going to be equal to Fg minus F. And right, F net is just going to be the mass of the rocket times the acceleration of the rocket. So we have this equation right over here. Fg minus F is equal to Ma. Awesome. So now what we want is we want to find out what is this F. So F, we can rearrange by getting, so we can rearrange for F and it's going to be Fg minus mass times acceleration. So well, we have Fg, right? Because we know our mass of the rocket and we know what gravity is. We know our mass, but we don't know what our acceleration is. So this means that we have to get our acceleration. And now, we, since we need our acceleration, we how do we get that? Well, we have these pieces of information, right? So we have that VI, this final VF, right? So this speed over here at the ground, that's going to be the final speed, which is zero meters per second. This initial VI is going to be 30 meters per second. And that, in this rocket, travels 80 meters to the ground, right? And we're going to say that this is going to be positive, right? Just because we said that since it's going downwards 80 meters, that means 80 is going to be positive because we said downwards is positive, right? That's why I just, I changed it a few, like a minute ago. So I just realized that while I was reading the question. Okay. Anyways, so if we have our distance is equal to 80, we have our VI is equal to 30 meters per second, and we have our VF is equal to zero meters per second. Well, now we can solve for acceleration, right? Because this is just, these are variables in kinematic equations, and we can use one of our kinematic equations that has all these different variables to solve for acceleration. So which equation is that? It's going to be VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. And VF squared is going to be zero meters per second, right? And VI, we said, was 30 meters per second, right? Plus two times acceleration, which we don't know, times the distance, which is 80 meters, right? So let's rearrange minus 30 minus 30. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to include the units just because it gets messy. But okay. So minus 30 meters per second squared. 
is equal to 2a times 80. And remember, you can keep these and rearrange for acceleration first, which is what I should have done. But it really doesn't matter if you want to plug in your values now or later, whatever, whatever you like better. But I'm just going to go ahead and just say it's going to be vi, vf squared minus vi squared over 2d. And that's going to be what a is, right? And so that's going to be minus 30 squared divided by 2 times 80. And that's going to be acceleration. And acceleration, if we plug that into our calculator, if we plug these values into our calculator, what we get is... minus 5.625 meters per second squared. Okay, so that makes sense. That's our acceleration. And now, if we wanna find out what F is, we just have to do FG minus MA and we get our F. So FG, is going to be 20 times 9.8 meters per second squared times our acceleration, which is, oh, sorry, minus mass, which is 20. So that looks like a T. I'm going to rewrite that. That's going to be confusing. And you know what? Actually, even, even better than this, I'm going to going to do you one better. And I'm going to go ahead and write this as mg minus ma, right? Because fg is equal to mg minus ma minus ma. And that, and I write it like this because that way we can say that F is equal to M G minus A and M 9.8. Sorry, let me just plug in these values, right? So M is equal to 20.0 times 9.8 or yeah, 9.8 minus because 9.8 is positive, because again, we said positive is downward. Minus A, right? So minus, minus 5.625, right? Because we got a minus 5.625 for acceleration here. So this is our equation. Sorry, I see an empty space right over here. So I'm just gonna direct you your attention to this box. When I plug these values into my calculator, oh no, sorry, plugged in something wrong. What I get when I plug in this equation is F is equal to 308.5 newtons, right? So 309 newtons because three significant digits, perfect. Okay, so that is what F is equal to. So that's the solution to our problem. I hope that was helpful. If you have any question, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't forget to send me an email or you can leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.